the universe. This immense territory echoes the infinite, the incredible, and the extraordinary. The celestial phenomena are grandiose. The magic operates at every moment. It is undoubtedly for this reason that it fascinates so much. Since prehistoric times, the universe in its immensity has amazed men fascinated by this sublime picture that unfolds before our eyes every night, they have always sought the keys to their origins. This fervor, which animates humanity since the beginning of our history, has given birth to many beliefs. By dint of observations and scientific studies, today we know much more about the universe and the secrets it holds. However, there are still mysteries that we are unable to solve. This is undoubtedly what makes the charm of the cosmos. This part of the mystery is captivating. Like a magnet, we feel attracted by this celestial phenomenon. We like to admire these stellar objects during the beautiful summer nights when the sky is perfectly clear. Our starting point but the Earth, a planet which is, for the moment anyway, unique in the world. It seems to be the only one capable of harboring life. If the sensational landscapes, the varied customs and cultures, the thousands of animal and plant species deserve 1001 trips to discover them all, it is indeed the universe that invites us to meet it in this incredible and extraordinary journey. Are you curious and adventurous enough to embark on such a cosmic journey? Dear Traveler, good morning. Today you will go from place to place, full of questions about the world, about the meaning of life and the universe. You will go in search of answers about your origins, your identity, the very essence of the universe. Sometimes you will have answers to your questions. Sometimes the mystery will remain and your questions will be left unanswered, thus preserving all the celestial magic of the cosmos. But before leaving for a new adventure, think of liking the video and subscribing to the channel to not miss anything. Thank you and have a nice trip. This is our world, our planet. You see all these celestial objects glittering. The universe seems so huge. Are we just insignificant specks of dust in the middle of this vastness? Is the universe hospitable or hostile and dangerous? Which celestial elements shelter the universe? How does all this small world live in gravitation above our heads? We could stand there for hours, days, and even centuries, asking ourselves these questions tirelessly while admiring the sky from this window. But the little prince has the particularity of never leaving a question without a satisfactory answer. It is time for us to take the path to the sky and discover with our own eyes the immensity. The space. At what point can you really be considered to have crossed the border of the atmosphere and entered space? 100 kilometers or 62 miles. That is only one hour's drive from your home. And here you are in space, at the gates of the universe. The earth behind us seems immense and majestic, with its variations of blues and these white clouds which float. If you move away a little more, you will see that it seems very small in the middle of the universe. Next to it, a small stone seems to live next to it. 
It is the moon. It will be the first stop on this journey. You can set foot on the moon like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin did a few decades before you in 1969. But we didn't come here to follow in the footsteps of those great astronauts. From Earth, you can see the moon almost every night. From here, you can see one side of the Earth. Everything seems so close and within reach of our eyes. However, nearly 400,000 kilometers or 250,000 miles separates us from your home. That's almost 10 times the circumference of our planet. By car, with an average speed of 100 kilometers per hour, or 62 miles per hour, it would take you 160 days to reach the moon from your home. Such a distance seems incredible, and yet our eyes are still able to see the Earth. In the universe, the notion of time and distance will seem completely crazy. These conceptions seem indeed unbelievable, surreal. They exceed the understanding, the limit of the reasonable, our own limits. As incredible as it may seem, as unimaginable as it may seem to you, these numbers represent our universe. We are part of a great whole, immensely large, incredibly gigantic, wildly disproportionate. We are finally only a small grain of dust in the middle of infinity. But let's go back to the moon. It still has some mysteries to reveal to us. If for millions of years the moon the natural satellite of the Earth seems to be able to orbit peacefully around our planet, it was not always the case. Do you notice all these craters? They are the result of impacts with meteorites and asteroids. On your left, you can see the footprints of the cosmonaut who had the chance to take his first steps on the moon a few years ago. A little further on, are the remains of a reflector. The lunar mission was to use this tool to measure the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Neil Armstrong and his colleagues have also immortalized their passage on the Moon thanks to a plaque placed on the Moon during their Apollo mission. It reads, Here men from planet Earth first set foot on the Moon in July 1969. It's amazing to be able to find a human object and read our language on a celestial object thousands of miles away from Earth, isn't it? You see, the universe is full of surprises. So far, you are still close to home, with a view of the Earth and human objects that remind us of our presence and affirm our existence. But we are already far from the comfortable and pleasant environment we know. We are on the moon. You can touch these rocks. It is rocks like this one that the astronauts brought back to Earth to be analyzed by researchers and scientists. They then discovered facts about the moon that were previously unknown. In particular, it underwent an intense heat after an explosion. The moon would finally be a small part of the Earth. Four billion years ago, another celestial body collided with it. Projectiles of molten rock then spread out in the sky and gave birth to our satellite. Since then, the moon is part of our cultural heritage. It inspires our legends and tales, and it gives rhythm to our oceans with the effect of the tides. Before continuing our exploration, imagine for a few minutes the emotion 
that these men might have felt when for the first time mankind was treading the soil of the moon. Imagine how they felt when they admired the breathtaking view of the earth. No one had ever been able to appreciate the earth from this angle before. One small step for mankind, one giant leap for mankind, will be remembered. But we are still here on a territory already explored by man. It is time for you to go further to discover more about the universe. It is time to hit the road and discover another hidden corner of our cosmos. We couldn't resume our journey without taking the time to stop on well-known planets, those of our solar system. At least you think you know them, but you will discover them from another angle. You will get close enough to them to discover the mysteries that surround them. For the moment, none of them is inhabited, but you will see that they deserve that we stop for a moment to admire and understand their particularity. Look around you, take the time, observe, admire the beauty of the universe. These billions of luminous points seem to dance around us to the rhythm of our hearts beating. The image is extraordinary, isn't it? No photo. No painting could represent with finesse and authenticity the magic that operates before our eyes. The nature, the world that surrounds us, is definitely incredible. Come on, we have a long way to go. It's time for you to start your journey and live your first encounter. You see, from here, we are far enough away from the Earth that you can see our solar system in its entirety. Our Earth shares its star with many sisters and cousins. They are all as special and incredible as each other. You probably know Mercury, Venus, our Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Can you recognize them from here? Let's get a little closer to the sun. You see that little pearl next to our star. That's Mercury. It is the smallest planet in our solar system. Its dimensions are similar to the moon, about 5,000 kilometers in diameter, or 3,100 miles in diameter. Here, life does not exist. Temperatures vary between minus 183 and 430 degrees Celsius. That is to say, between minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit and 806 degrees Fahrenheit. Water in a liquid state is unthinkable, and the danger is constant. Unlike our Earth, there is no atmosphere to protect us from the sun. Heat penetrates or escapes as easily as when your living room window is left open. You can probably see that like on the moon, the ground is covered with craters. Scientists believe that four billion years ago, a veritable bombardment of asteroids hit the planets from all sides. Here too, there is neither wind nor water for the erosion to do its work. The remains of these impacts are still perfectly intact and will probably remain so for several thousand years. Mercury is a telluric planet. That is, it is made of rock, just like the planet Earth or Venus. Here, I have a question for you. Is the shepherd's star really a star? Well, no. Our morning and evening star, the first one to appear every day for thousands of years, is none other than the beautiful Venus. Come on, let's go and meet her. Look, there it is. It is the brightest of the solar system. 
This intense light is due to the yellow clouds that cover it and reflect the sun. It is named after the goddess of love. Of an incredible beauty, she could not hope for a better name. But if her name evokes sweetness and tenderness, one should not trust appearances. She is neither friendly nor welcoming. You will soon realize this. It is similar to the Earth in many ways, especially in size and gravity. It is also called the Earth's sister. However, as you may have noticed, the climate seems much more inhospitable than on Earth, and you are absolutely right. Those yellowish clouds you can see are loaded with deadly sulfuric acid. We will nevertheless pierce these clouds and try to see them from a little closer. This planet, like ours, has an atmosphere. We could therefore think we are safe, but this will not be the case. Far from it. Here, the air is full of carbon dioxide. It is unbreathable, oppressive, suffocating. The pressure is much more intense than on Earth, and the extreme temperatures persist at 500 degrees Celsius, or more than 932 degrees Fahrenheit. You won't be able to stay here much longer. Look around you. Hundreds of volcanoes run the length and breadth of Venus. No life has managed to survive around here. It would be eaten away by acid, suffocated and charred in a split second. We must leave. Let's go back to the vast universe, calm and silent, in the middle of the void. Despite the striking similarities, the Earth is a very different planet. It is neither too hot nor too cold with water, light, and oxygen. It has all the ingredients necessary for life. There are billions of planets in the universe. So far, scientists have managed to identify only 5,000 of them, which is both a lot and nothing at all on the scale of the universe. For the moment, none of them could allow man to live without being in constant danger. The planets are hostile and do not have all the characteristics necessary for life. Nevertheless, I would like to take you to Mars. As with Venus in the past, life sometimes hangs by a thread. Look, there it is, the Red Planet. This extraordinary planet has fed our imagination. Would life on this planet be possible? Nothing is less certain. It seems empty, dead. Yet the same processes that made the Earth habitable also took place on Mars. The only difference between the planet where we are and the Earth is that here, these processes did not go all the way. They stopped hundreds of millions of years ago. You see, life doesn't depend on much. Chance, luck, fate. Why did the Earth manage to complete all the processes leading to life and not the planet Mars? Some answers, but no convincing justification to offer you for the moment. Researchers are studying this sister planet closely, but the mystery still hangs in the air. Be careful on this planet. You see all these whirlwinds. They look like the tornadoes we can experience on Earth. But their size is nothing like what we know. Much smaller, Earth tornadoes already do a lot of damage. So imagine what Martian tornadoes could do. But nothing is ever black and white. The universe is a paradox. If these monstrous tornadoes are a danger, 
they are also good news. For tornadoes to be born, you need wind. For there to be wind, there must be air. So Mars is a planet that has air. Water would also be present. Could man live there? Not for the time being, anyway. The air on Mars is not quite composed in the same way as the air we breathe on Earth. The carbon dioxide is much more important and would make our survival impossible. In addition, this planet is still very cold and unlike our planet Earth. Nothing here protects you from the sun's rays. Ultraviolet rays are very powerful. Without protection, you would not last very long. The temperature is close to minus 80 degrees Celsius or minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, water is ice. Even in the atmosphere, it is only snow. Impossible at such a temperature to find large expanses of water in a liquid state. However, that was not always the case. Let's land on its surface and wait a little. A new show is coming. In a few minutes, you will discover your first sunset on Mars. But before we look at the sky, let's look at the ground. As you can see, the planet is covered with sand of a reddish hue, for which it received the nickname Red. The color of Mars comes from the high concentration of iron in its soil. And this famous red is in fact rust. But how could all this iron rust, knowing that the atmosphere of our neighbor contains very little oxygen? The answer is simply that at an earlier date, Mars was covered with water that evaporated, leaving behind the traces of this ancient world. Look, if you know the flaming sunsets that we can admire on Earth, here on Mars, the sunset has something unusual. It is blue. If you look hard enough, a little higher in the sky, you can see our planet. But all hope is not lost. You see this gigantic mountain. It is called Olympus Mons. Its measurements are incredible, almost 600 kilometers in diameter, that is 370 miles in diameter, and it culminates at more than 21,000 meters high, that is, almost 69,000 feet high. It is far from being the only giant in this Martian land. Other volcanoes, such as Pavanus Mons, Asia Mons, or Acreus Mons, are part of these red-footed giants of the planet Mars. They all culminate between 15,000 and 17,000 meters, or between 50,000 and 56,000 feet in altitude. Olympus Mons is the most important of them. 21 kilometers, more than 13 miles. That's more than three times Mount Everest. The volcanoes are much larger than those found on Earth or Venus. Yet these planets are much larger than Mars. But here, there has never been a movement of tectonic plates as on Earth. The lava is therefore concentrated in certain points. The rock is therefore immutable. When a volcano is born here, it pushes the limits of the incredible. Somewhere on these mountains, you have probably noticed canyons. There again, their dimensions are amazing. They are the remains of lava flows, but also of dried up rivers. The water flowed in these red corridors Look at the side of these rocky cliffs. You can see traces of erosion and probably of dried up water. Life could have flourished here and lived happily ever after. But for the moment, 
no Earth technology has made it possible to be sure. Was there life on Mars? Did it die out like the dinosaurs on Earth? Did organisms acclimate to the extreme conditions, as in the case in our deserts and glaciers? Could it be that on Mars, life forms managed to fight for their survival despite extraordinary climatic conditions? Perhaps there is nothing left. This planet seems so cold and empty. But if Olympus Mons is almost inactive and considered as sleeping, its awakening could change the course of things. Its volcanic eruption would thaw the water in the soil. A whole process of life creation could then be born from the eruption of this molten magma. One day, this little NASA robot that you see walking on the Martian soil may have the answer. Opportunity will travel the planet to study the soil in search of the remains of lakes or oceans. Who knows, this desolate landscape may one day be synonymous with life. Speaking of life, if I ask you about the essential elements that allow life to flourish, you will probably answer that water or air are essential. But have you thought about heat and light? Without our sun, nothing would be possible on the surface of our planet. Follow me. You must go to meet it, to see it more closely. Stars are fascinating. The most famous is the sun, of course, and it alone represents a lot. It is our light, our source of life. For thousands of years it has been revered by many people around the world. Its light is very powerful. Don't stare too hard at it, you'll burn your eyes. But at the same time, how can you resist such a phenomenon? It is hypnotizing. It has a kind of attractive power. It fascinates. It gives rhythm to our days, and it must be said, without it, nothing would be possible. Of course, we need water and oxygen, but without heat, without light, what would we do? Imagine for a few moments living in the dark, intense and deep, without even the moon to light your days and nights, because it is only visible thanks to the sun. The temperatures would be freezing. We would all be doomed to disappear. Our lives, yours, mine, the lives of all mankind and future generations depend on this star, a star located at more than 150 million kilometers that is to say, 93 million miles. By plane, it would take 20 years from this point to get home. You see, the universe is full of paradoxes like this. The Earth and the Sun are distant from each other, tens of thousands of kilometers apart, and yet, our planet depends totally on it. You are used to see it every day floating proudly in the sky, even if it sometimes plays hide-and-seek behind the clouds, and you probably think you can recognize it very easily. From thousands of miles and miles, it definitely is, but from here, a handful of miles and miles, it is unrecognizable. You see all these eddies, they are incandescent gases. Here the temperatures approach the 5,000 degrees Celsius, or 9,032 degrees Fahrenheit. This extreme temperature is the consequence of one of the essential phenomena of the universe. You see, the heat is so important here that it allows to produce nuclear reactions matter is transformed into energy. Thousands of tons of matter are transformed every second. 
This energy can be seen from the Earth. It is the heat and the light that the sun gives off. On Earth, the sun is a landmark, a blessing even. Without its light and heat, there would be chaos. The sun has something reassuring, almost comforting. But this conception of the sun is only possible on Earth. When you get close to the sun, you can see how impressive and dangerous it is. Thousands of explosions occur on its surface and cause what are called solar prominences in astronomy. They look like arcs of light. They are filled with incandescent gas. Its magnetic and electrical activity is very strong. Did you hear that explosion? It is impressive, scary and extraordinary at the same time. It is a solar flare. It is a jet of electrified gas. The heat of this jet is extremely strong. It rejects deadly radiations through space. We must take cover. There, we are far enough away from the sun to protect ourselves from its radiation. You see these heat waves. They look like our oceans. The waves ripple on the surface, but they are not as attractive as our ocean floor. The sun is a star, and like all stars in the universe, it is part of the cycle of life. Stars are born and die. The sun will also die one day. But this will not happen for billions of years. It still has enough fuel to light up our days for a long time. I imagine you must feel very small next to such a behemoth. Jupiter is almost 11 times the size of Earth. But that's not all. Imagine that its volume is so big that it could contain 1,300 Earths like ours. Imagine 1,300 balls like our planet Earth in the belly of Jupiter. It's unbelievable, isn't it? You see, at this precise moment, at such a distance from our place of life, the magic still works when we discover with our own eyes this giant planet. It is the largest in our solar system. You would probably like to land on the ground of this imposing and majestic planet, wouldn't you? I detect in your eyes this desire and this curiosity. Unfortunately, it is impossible to go down here. You see, in spite of its incredible size, it is not constituted in the same way as our planet. It is mostly made of gas. If we land, we will sink forever. We must therefore remain cautious and continue to gravitate around it to admire its beauty and to penetrate its mysteries. These white and brown bands are intriguing. In your opinion, what is the origin of these bands? If they are sublime, many artists would describe them as beautiful as pure art. However, they are indeed dangerously diabolical. Jupiter rotates very fast, much faster than the Earth. This causes violent winds in continuous gusts. They create, they shape, they model clouds in bands like the ones you can see around Jupiter, just below our feet. That red spot right there is alone three times larger than the planet Earth. In the form of swirls, this spot is nothing other than an incredibly violent storm that has been going on for 300 years. No respite for hundreds of years in this corner of Jupiter. Under these clouds, calm in appearance, which seems simply to run around this planet, helped by the breath of a very strong wind, there are intense flashes of lightning 
that zap the sky. The electric arcs are of an incredible violence, much more than our enlightened Earthmen. Let us move away a little. Jupiter has something else interesting, its natural satellites. If the Earth has only one, Jupiter has 79. Among these 79, four are of particular interest. They are the Galilean moons. Look, here is Ganymede, and here is Callisto. A little closer to Jupiter, that's Europa, right there. But let's get even closer and stop near Io. This satellite looks nothing like the lunar ground we walked on just a few minutes ago. Do you remember the dusty, grayish, windless, noiseless, almost peaceful ground that was in gravity around our planet? Here, the colors are more vivid and the ground behavior much more active. That's true. But again, don't trust appearances. What you see down there is molten rock. The sulfur gives these intense colors to this particular moon. Those jets you see appearing everywhere are volcanoes and sulfur jets. They project their sulfuric cocktail up to 100 kilometers in the air. Here, all the surface is only explosion. We are far from our moon, so soft and restful. But rest assured, not all the moons of Jupiter are so dangerous and hostile. Come, we will land for a few moments on Europa. Here, we are 650 million kilometers, or 400 million miles from Earth, far from home. We are also far from the Sun. Almost 800 million kilometers, or 500 million miles separate us from our star. You see here, everything is ice. The many shapes that you can see form ridges that dot the ground on either side of Jupiter's satellite. Europa is unique, a sort of giant Antarctic. You would probably like to know if life is possible here. It is true that under the ice, an ocean of liquid water is present. Who says presence of water could let to think that everything is possible? To know it, it would be necessary to be able to pierce the ice, to make samples and to analyze the elements. If the core is frozen, nothing could suggest that a bacterial and microscopic life could have been born. Perhaps this ice floats on liquid water as it does on Earth. Perhaps the attraction of Jupiter would create friction in the core and thus heat. This would mean that some form of life could flourish under the ice crust. To find out, there is only one solution. We must be able to pierce this ice mantle. But with our current technology, however powerful it may be, such a trip is unlikely. This incredible satellite will remain a mystery for some time to come. This planet and its rings are, for the youngest and the oldest, an icon of the sky. It captivates. It fascinates. It seems to dance in the middle of our galaxy. Intoxicating. Exhilarating. Its beauty has always captivated the lovers of the sky. These rings give it this little charm in addition. It does not look like any other. This giant planet, like Jupiter, is a ball of gas. You could not land on its ground. It does not really have any. Saturn is to the universe what a feather is to our sky. It is so light that it could undoubtedly float on water. You have probably noticed its rings, but have you paid attention to their size? Their size is gigantic. It could represent the distance between our planet and the moon without difficulty. 
if their length is astronomical. They are, however, not very thick, only a few hundred meters, but it is more than enough to make it wonderful. The beauty is probably born of chaos. Scientists believe that the rings were formed by the remains of a satellite of Saturn. By gravitational effect, and thanks to the attraction of this planet, the pieces of this ancient moon run around the giant for thousands of kilometers. These pieces of ice are billions. They regularly collide. While some break up after impact, others form over the millennia as they follow Saturn's path. I'd like to tell you about one satellite of Saturn in particular, Titan. If we often talk about these rings for their exceptional beauty, it is true that they make it one of the most beautiful goddesses of the universe. Titan deserves that we linger a moment. Do you notice that we have the impression that there is an atmosphere in this satellite? We see clouds, wind, and even rain. Would you have imagined for a moment that this is possible, thousands of kilometers from the Earth, so far from the Sun? Then look, see these lakes and rivers. They seem to feed the hope of extraterrestrial life. But make no mistake, never trust appearances in the universe. Always keep it in the back of your mind. If this turquoise water makes you want to dive, I strongly advise against it. That pretty blue is not water, but liquid gas. In the present state of things, no life is possible here. Maybe one day, the elements will change the course of things. Let us move away now from Titan to regain the orbit of Saturn. Look, from here we can see our planet, this bright point which looks like a star. In this impressive void, in the most total nothingness, you can see Uranus. It seems so far away, so alone. It is difficult to imagine that this planet is part of the same system as ours, it is captivating with this beautiful ring. It sublimates this giant ball in the heart of a world that seems so cold and hostile. Further away, you can see Neptune. It bears the name of the god of living waters and springs. It seems so peaceful in the hollow of this ocean of emptiness, but it is not so. That spot you can see right there is again the sign of a raging storm. When I say storm, I have to tell you that this one is unlike anything you've ever experienced on Earth. The winds reach nearly 1,500 kilometers per hour. Its satellite, Triton, is just as agitated. Look at the surface. Do you notice the geysers? You can't miss them because of their size. It is true that they are impressive. They throw out clouds of soot. Everything seems ready to break at any moment, as if the total destruction of this satellite was imminent. Why this diabolical agitation on the surface? This moon does not rotate in the same direction as the planet Neptune. It is in gravity around it, but in the opposite direction. A rebellious moon in short, but it pays a high price. The pressure of Neptune on its satellite is colossal. One day she will not be able to fight anymore. She will not have the strength. You see here, we are at the limits of our solar system. You have seen for yourself we have traveled millions of miles, and yet we are here at the beginning of what remains of the universe. Our solar system is only a tiny part of the cosmos. 
Beyond this frontier, there is still so much to learn and so much to discover. The numbers are so large that our brains have a hard time making sense of them. 10 million million kilometers, or more than 6 million million miles. What distance can this represent on a human scale? From this place, we leave the domain of the reasonable. Everything becomes disproportionate. From now on, the kilometers do not have any more direction. Distances are far too important. An endless sequence of numbers no longer allows us to appreciate the length. We will have to speak in light years from now on. You have probably already heard this term. One light year represents 10 billion kilometers, or 6 billion miles. It takes light one year to travel this distance. Even though we are talking about years, it is not time, but distance that we are trying to evaluate with this unit of measurement. We enter the infinite. The immensity of the universe takes all its sense from now on. Did you ever think you would see so many stars around you? This 360 degree view will remain engraved in your memory. Look how beautiful it is. This black canvas dotted with points of light. If we hadn't lost our childlike souls, we would surely be convinced that all this is nothing but fairy dust. It is true that the moment is magical. The universe is truly incredible. Imagine that all those stars you can see for billions of miles around may each have planets orbiting them. These same planets may also have moons. The model of our solar system is not unique. On the contrary, it is a concept present billions of times in every corner of the cosmos. Perhaps a planet, twin to the Earth, harbors life trillions of miles away from us, without our even being aware of it. These extraterrestrial lives, like you and me, are wondering if, at the other end of the universe, life is possible. To travel to the next solar system after ours, we would need 150,000 years of travel on a current space shuttle. Let me introduce you to Alpha Centauri. It is impressive, isn't it? Two other stars live next to it. It is not one, but three suns that occupy this system. Their gravitational system is very strong. One star revolves around the other. The only thing that allows them not to collide is their speed of rotation. We still have everything to learn from this neighboring system. It is at the same time, so close on the scale of the universe, but so far from our technological possibilities. Maybe one day we will know more. Oh, look in the distance. See that star and the luminous dust orbiting it. We absolutely must go there. We must see with your own eyes this incredible phenomenon. This is Epsilon, Deridant. We have traveled more than 10 light years to get close to it. These rocks and ice debris orbiting this star in the middle of this ring of dust will come together to form planets. What an extraordinary phenomenon, and what an incredible opportunity to witness such an event. The rocks turn and dance around this star, like a love parade. Then the magic happens. Gravitation, the force of attraction, the speed of rotation, all these parameters favor creation. The comets you see here and there are like seeds that sow life. Loaded with organic matter, they could even give birth to an Earth-like planet one day. The spectacle is exceptional, and it is happening right before our eyes. 
Could you imagine witnessing such a stellar phenomenon one day? This system is still young, but it allows us to better imagine and understand our own system. It is as if, by observing this star, we had the opportunity to go back in time to witness the birth of our own solar system. To meet a star of the same age as our sun, we have to move away again. Are you ready? With an astronomical speed, we are now more than 20 light years away from the Earth. In front of you is Gliese 581. It belongs to the red dwarf stars Two of the four planets of the Gliese system are at an ideal distance from their star, neither too close nor too far. Would water and life be imaginable on these exoplanets? Could parallel worlds harboring life live 20 light years away from each other without even being aware of it? I will not be able to answer this question. Such a lack of data does not allow a sufficient analysis to affirm or refute the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Since the beginning of time, man has been searching for extraterrestrial life. Perhaps the feeling of loneliness is too much for mankind to bear. This isolation in the middle of the void, unthinkable. There are so many stars planets, galaxies, infinite possibilities. It's a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack. But this haystack, we are unable to evaluate its size. Our discoveries are therefore often the result of the greatest of chances. We are now more than 1300 light years away from Earth. This is fascinating and frightening at the same time. How to conceptualize such a distance in our human brain? Here we are far beyond what we know, but also far beyond what we can imagine. Nothing is like what we have seen so far. Take a look right here, right in front of you. Do you know what it is? This extraordinary light phenomenon is the Orion Cloud. From a distance, it is absolutely beautiful. But up close, this dense light is blinding. We are totally disoriented. We do not have any more sight on anything. Any point of reference seems to have completely disappeared. The gases and dust are responsible for this phenomenon isolating us completely from the rest of the universe. If you still have the strength and energy, let's go a little further inside this extraordinary cloud. Do you notice this ball of light? It seems to attract towards it dust and gas. While admiring this incredible vision of the universe, you can see with your own eyes the birth of a star. Through these billions of billions of kilometers, it is not only a huge distance that you have traveled, but a real leap in time. This is the same phenomenon that took place in our own system more than 4.6 billion years ago. At that point in our history, everything changed. The sun was born, and its impact on the universe allowed the birth of our planet, but also of the whole of humanity. This luminous ball attracts dust and gases like a magnet. By heating them, they merge into a ball of burning gas. It then becomes the beginnings of a star. The heat released is impressive. The temperature climbs to millions of degrees. If this number can seem frightening to you, it is synonymous with creation. Thanks to this heat produced, many phenomena can take place. For example, nuclear reactions take place and produce radiation, energy, and heat. The birth of this star 
allows you to imagine what gave birth to our sun millions of years ago. Through this stellar hatching, it is as if you were witnessing the birth of our own star, the one that allowed the creation of our planet. This phenomenon is not an isolated case. Hundreds of thousands of stars are born and die in the universe without us being aware of it. The Orion Cloud is a real nursery. Look around you and you will understand that you are witnessing not one, but many births. It is the creation of a whole world that is taking place in this part of the universe. Extraordinary, isn't it? Another great paradox of the cosmos. By moving away from our planet to this point, you probably thought you would find a cold and empty place or a hostile and dangerous one. And yet here we are, in a remote corner of the universe, synonymous with creation, birth, and beginning. Now, every night that you have the opportunity to observe the sky, you will think of this incredible spectacle. You will never see the stars in the same way again. The birth of a star is extraordinary, but it takes patience to create such beautiful things. The whole universe has this ability. Thousands of years will be necessary to sculpt in the apparent void the preamble of a new star system. But the creation is not done without an unheard of violence. This luminous spectrum projects gases at more than 200,000 kilometers per hour or 125,000 miles per hour. These luminous jets that you can see across this protostar propel gas and dust for thousands of miles and miles. Be careful. You have to stay at a safe distance. Look at what this cosmic chaos produces. Isn't it the most beautiful thing you've seen so far? These glowing clouds form what is called a nebula. The Orion Nebula, which is right under our feet, is of incomparable beauty. James Webb, the famous latest generation telescope, has brought back pictures of this nebula. It is without doubt the most beautiful images of the universe that we have. The picture is sublime and the emotion indescribable. We are more than 1,300 light years from home. The distance is colossal. Despite everything, we are still in our Milky Way. We have only seen a tiny part of the immensity of the cosmos. The Orion Nebula is not so far from us in the scale of the universe and is the most beautiful nebula that we can admire from our sky. Scientists believe that nebulae are born from the explosion of a star. When a star dies, an extremely violent explosion occurs called a supernova. Gas, dust, and other stellar and cosmic debris are projected over billions of kilometers. What is fascinating is to think that from this end comes the beginning. A star dies, and others are born. The cycle of life is finally a universal concept to the farthest reaches of the cosmos. I would now like to take you even further, 4,000 light years away from our blue planet. 4,000 light years. That's the distance you have to travel to discover the remains of a star. All these luminous elements are remnants of the past. In fusion, they were dispersed in space after the star died out. You can see different shades of colors. Here and there, some purple. They are hydrogen and helium. A little further on, the red and blue right here are the remains of nitrogen and oxygen. 
It is in this stellar ash that everything began for us. It is from this debris that our star and our planet were born. Our history finally begins here, billions of years before our era, billions of light years away. Would you have imagined having to go back so far and travel such a distance to discover the beginnings of your own history? You can see in the heart of this thousand-colored picture a white ball. It is our sun in eight billion years. It is what we call in astronomy a white dwarf. This star is dying slowly. It is incredibly dense. So dense that a small part the size of a sugar cane weighs more than a ton. This phenomenon undoubtedly raises a question, how an object so heavy can hold in balance in the skies. Attraction, gravity, cosmic phenomena are so complex that they sometimes seem completely crazy as the limit of understanding. But we think in a human way on our scale. Some phenomena are beyond us. Now that you have seen with your own eyes the birth and death of stars, I would like to show you another phenomenon. Your journey through the universe would be incomplete without this incredible visit. But we must go back in time and space to the origins of the universe, where everything began. Our next rendezvous awaits us 6,000 light years from Earth. We are here in the Crab Nebula. You must find some similar events with the Orion Nebula that we have just left. What you see here are the remains of a star, a supernova. The explosion, according to researchers, would have taken place about 900 years ago. It was observed by a Chinese astronomer between 1054 and 1056. At that time, what was thought to be a new star shone intensely day and night. Its presence and explosion have since been confirmed by scientists, including Edwin Hubble, in 1928. But what I want you to discover is at the heart of the remains of this supernova that stretches for billions of miles. Right there, look. See those pulses? It looks like a beating heart. This star is spinning and pulsating 33 times a second. That's it, a pulsar. At this stage of our knowledge, researchers believe that the phenomenon is due to gravity. Gravity would have favored the density of the nucleus to the point of compressing it beyond the imaginable. This time, a part of the pulsar the size of a sugar cane weighs not one, but millions of tons. Its diameter is a mere 20 kilometers, or just 12 miles. But as it shrinks, its rotational speed increases. These two beams spinning to the rhythm of the pulses release large amounts of clouds, dust, and gas. It is captivating and horrifying at the same time. How is such a phenomenon possible? If a pulsar existed in our solar system, we would be no more. The extreme violence of the radiation would annihilate everything in its path, billions of kilometers away. With Orion, we could observe the most beautiful, here, we are undoubtedly facing the most dangerous phenomenon of the universe. If the presence of life in the universe elsewhere than on Earth has been a question for centuries, it is not the only enigma that man is trying to solve. The activity of pulsars is still very unclear. But there is something else that you absolutely must see with your own eyes from space. 
This is probably the most captivating, but also the most mysterious of all interstellar phenomena. There is one in most galaxies. We are here at 53 million light years from the Earth in the galaxy M87. This celestial object that you can see is a black hole. If the black hole is invisible, we can distinguish the luminous ring that draws its silhouette. Its mass is millions or billions of times greater than the Sun. In the area of this black hole, the gravitation is very strong, much stronger than what we have seen so far. It is so strong that even light, which is the fastest entity we know at the moment, cannot escape the black hole. It is like being sucked into the depths of the black hole. This object has more or less defined edges. It is the border of the black hole that scientists call the event horizon. This spiral is fascinating and frightening at the same time. It exceeds by far all the knowledge we have of space. But what we know for sure is that it constitutes a point of no return. Once you're inside, you don't come back. We don't come back because in the singularity of the black hole, that is to say, the depth of the black hole that you can see right in the center of the spiral, is infinitely small and dense. Here, the laws of space, time, and physics no longer apply. Researchers have nevertheless managed to categorize different types of black holes. The stellar and the supermassive are the most common. According to the latest scientific studies, the stellar black hole is born when a massive star is at the end of its life. It burns hydrogen. Then, when it has no more gas to burn, and therefore can no longer resist the attraction, its core will suck it and give birth to a black hole. These black holes are so small that it's a bit like trying to see a human cell on the moon. You see here, the infinitely large meets the infinitely small. Space is definitely full of surprises. It is time for us to return to our galaxy, to our solar system. We still have a lot to learn before returning to the comfort of our blue planet. Look, there are a few more celestial objects that we haven't mentioned so far, and they are right there above you. This comet ventured a little too close to the sun. In astronomy, comets are celestial bodies made up of a nucleus of ice and dust. It is orbiting a star. But this one is close enough that the heat of our star makes it boil in space. It melts its frozen core, and real geysers of steam and dust come out of the core. You see this white veil that follows it. It looks like the magical hair of a legendary creature. These luminous trails are gases and dust evacuated by the icy nucleus of the comet. They can extend, as is surely the case for this one, over millions of kilometers. Look a little further. This time we are facing an asteroid. This celestial body is composed of rock, but also of metals. They are sometimes called minor planets. Do you know why? Their nickname comes from their origin. Asteroids, like comets, are probably left over from the formation of the solar system. They are pieces of rock that did not become part of the planets. Nevertheless, like them, asteroids orbit the Sun. The main asteroid belt is located between Mars and Jupiter. This is where we are now. If the asteroids do not all look the same, it is because they are not all made of the same elements. The darker ones here are rich in carbon. Others, lighter, are composed of silicates, iron, nickel or magnesium. 
Finally, the brightest ones, like this one, are mostly made of nickel and iron. These comets and asteroids are sometimes a source of concern for us humans. Scientists fear a possible collision between them and the Earth in the future. To better understand these bodies and learn more about the design of our solar system, scientists designed Philae, a probe that landed on a comet and more recently mascot to settle on an asteroid. In recent years, Several spacecraft have taken to space, some to protect us, such as the DART mission probe that struck an asteroid to deflect its trajectory and avoid a collision with Earth. Others to help us better understand and comprehend the universe around us. You can see one of them, the James Webb Telescope at the Lagrange Point, L2, at 1.5 million kilometers, almost at 1 million miles from our Earth. If this telescope, an engineering marvel, is located precisely on this point, it is for a particular reason. The Sun-to-Earth system has five points, the Lagrange points, where gravity and centrifugal force are balanced. For our artificial satellite, this is a precious advantage it will not need to correct its trajectory to maintain its orbit. Its position relative to the Earth will be stable. If we expect a lot from the James Webb images to understand the universe, men have also been trying for many years to detect the presence of extraterrestrial life. Are we alone in this immense territory? Voyager 1 has been traveling for 44 years in the cosmos. It has traveled nearly 23 billion kilometers, or 14 billion miles, with a record including messages from Earth. This is also the case of another spacecraft within the framework of NASA's New Horizons mission, which contains a universal message, including images and sounds of the Earth to extraterrestrials. Who knows, maybe one day we will have answers to these messages. But are we ready to meet living beings from another world?